Very brief information about me. I'm I'm voluntaries, I'm crypto anarchies, I'm using Bitcoin maybe since beginning, almost since beginning. I'm a global opportunist, which basically means I decentralize different aspects of my life, personal and economic life, to different countries. Uh, so I became something what is called a global opportunist. This presentation will be about global opportunists. Um, at the same time, I I'm one of the co-founder of Paralni Police in Prague, um, or one of the organizer or, co or uh, ex-organizer of HCPP, the biggest crypto anarchistic conference in Prague. And I love crypto. 95% of all my savings, almost all my savings are in crypto only. So I'm like a pure crypto or pure Bitcoin from this point of view, pure Bitcoin guy. Uh, firstly, all of you uh, use crypto. So all of you achieve first level of liberation. And I believe that you should continue and try to achieve another level and another step uh, to be free. So I'm going to explain to you, so to, to be able to achieve liberation or more liberation, uh, you should be able to, uh, to, to, to be aware of slavery. I'm, I'm specifically, I'm, I'm talking about tax slavery because all of you are probably tax slave. So firstly, you sh everybody, everybody should think, uh, how did I become tax slave? Do I, do I feel comfortable, comfortable in the position of slave? Uh, am I okay that I have to pay mandatory health or social insurance, which is extra tax? It's not, it's like a health, health tax. It's not like insurance, like many people used to say. And if you, if you were born, for example, in the US or Eritrea, these two countries, you're a tax slave by your citizenship. So for example, if you have income above $100,000 um, per, per year, you have to declare your income globally, and it doesn't matter where you, where you live or not. If you're a Czech citizen or if you're a Slovak citizen, you cannot have no tax residency. So imagine the situation that you travel full time every day, you are in the different, or every sec two days you're in different country, you still need to have tax master. You need some place where you pay taxes, where you're a tax resident. But fortunately, you can choose between multiple uh, tax residences or multiple tax masters. So usually you have to be tax slave somewhere. As I told you, you have an excellent possibility to, to choose the good tax master. Um, maybe you know this magic period of 180, 183 days, which means if you stayed in any country more than six months, more than 183 days, you are becoming the tax resident of the given country. In some countries, it's even less. For example, if you have the US uh, company and you are not a US citizen, uh, you can visit U US only for 31 days not to become a tax resident of the US. Another thing, what you should be aware that we live in a global apartheid. Uh, which means like a, our developed society are trying not to discriminate people based on race, based on religion, uh, based on gender, but all governments of all state, they discriminate people based on their birthplace and they call it visa policy. So you are definitely discriminated according to your passport. And if you, if you were not so lucky and you were born in some shitty country and you have a shitty passport, not European passport, for example, usually you are stuck in your home country. You can never leave your country and you can never uh, achieve better country or achieve your dreams and move to, uh, to better, uh, better country. I have many friends, for example, from Iran and they're really stuck. For them, it's super complicated, it's super difficult to travel anywhere. And you should be aware that all states accept this global apartheid, and they call it visa, visa policies. 
Uh, maybe you say, okay, but we agreed voluntarily that it's a collective decision uh, because we are protecting ourselves against danger of immigrants, crimes, and everything. Uh, but it's, it's, it's bullshit. It's a fabricated government bullshit. If you, if, if you want to find more information about this bullshit, you should definitely read this great book from Brian Kaplan, Open Borders. And uh, if you're like a libertarian, for example, or anarcho-capitalist, uh, you should know that thanks to the government, immigrants cannot come to your private property and work there. Okay. Uh, what is inter uh, in interesting to say, if you are consistent utilitarian, uh, uh, libertarian, or you believe in meritocracy, or you are just very strong Christian, uh, and you respect Christian values, in all these situations, you should find out that uh, the only moral society is society with completely open borders. Uh, and one important information is the most freedom you have if you have like a good card in your wallet. So this is like a typical um, example. This is like a diplomatic passport of United Nations, for example. If you have this passport, you can visit all countries in the world without visas, uh, except of North Korea. I think the North Korea is the only, only exception. Also, this is like a cedula of, uh, of, of Paraguay, the Braz Brazilian football player. Using this cedula, for example, you can visit uh, all countries of Mercosur, including Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, and Paraguay. Uh, if you have no good card in your wallet, you are stuck. You cannot move freely, you cannot open the bank account, you cannot do business, you are, you are highly discriminated. So, so the question is, wait a moment, how to obtain the best cards on the market? Um, the, the answer is become a global opportunist. You should know that good citizenship or passport uh, is like a normal commercial, standard commercial product. And if you're enough rich and if you have enough money, you can buy it. For example, the best European passport uh, that provides, which, which is possible to obtain, uh, is Spanish passport. You can buy it for half million of euros. Another one is Malta. You can buy it from 600 up to seven, 750,000 euros. Uh, the best non-EU passport is probably, according to the number of countries, uh, the passport of Sun Kids and Navies. Um, and there is like a cheaper solution, I just found out, which is uh, San Lucia, which is significantly cheaper and it's still like a really good passport. Um, if, you can, if you can afford it and you want to learn Portuguese language, there is like an option how to do, do it. You can visit Brazil, have a baby in Brazil, uh, and your baby immediately obtains citizenship of Brazil. Uh, and you, if you live one or two years in Brazil, as, as uh, his or her parent, in a one of, of year, you can, you can pass naturalization process, which means you have to pass language test from Portuguese, and you can obtain Brazilian, Brazilian citizenship. The question is, do I need second citizenship? Uh, what I can tell you, if you have EU passport, you probably have really good passport, uh, but you want, usually you want citizenship of the EU, but you don't want residency or especially tax residency in the EU. Because usually all your privileges are associated with your citizenship and all your duties and all your responsibilities are associated with your EU residency. As I told you, if you're US citizens and you don't want to be like a tax slave, you need second passport. I have many uh, ex-American friends, stateless people, or people with a new identity, new citizenship, uh, who decided to stop to be tax slave of the US. Uh, if you're a like, European resident, a European citizen, for example, German or, or, uh, or Czech citizen, usually you need second, second passport for extra legal protection. So for example, when your home country, your citizenship country revokes your passport, you still have the second passport you can use to stay in the country because otherwise 
they will deport you as, a, as an illegal immigrant. One important information, uh, tax residency usually uh, does not define, uh, 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 your citizenship usually does not, does not define your tax residency. But there are some exceptions. Uh, maybe you know the concept of citizenship by sole country. So if you are willing to have uh, baby in all these dark blue countries, um, your, your baby will automatically obtain the citizenship of this country. For example, I don't recommend you the US because your baby will become the tax slave of the US, but you can have a baby in Canada, for example, Argentina. Argentina is very popular now. There are like a, uh, 10,000 Russians uh, who, decided, like, who decided to have a baby in Buenos Aires, for example. Uh, and then, automatically, where your child obtains citizenship in the given country, you as a parent can ask for a residency or permanent residency quite easily. Uh, and then it's time to choose a good residency. Because usually, temporary or permanent residency defines your center of your interest. So if you, if you don't stay anywhere then more than eight, uh, one, 183 days, then your tax residency is the place where you have temporary or permanent residency. Uh, and on this map, you can see like a dark blue, uh, white blue countries and the pink countries. So the pink countries are usually the worst because in these pink countries, you have associated your tax duty with your citizenship. So if you have the citizenship of the, of the pink, pink countries, you should give up, renounce your citizenship and ask for the new passport. Um, if you have citizenship of this dark blue country, it means that you have an obligation to pay taxes from the, from the, you, you, from the global income. So it doesn't matter where you have income, you have to pay taxes from the global income, like all foreign income. And these white blue, uh, these uh, light blue countries are the best. Usually, all, almost all countries of Central America, and you can see also Paraguay, because in these countries, the, all these countries they have so-called territorial taxation, which means you have to pay taxes only from your local income, not for an income. So, for example, if you are Paraguayan uh, or Panamanian tax resident, you have to pay only taxes from local income you earn in Panama or Paraguay, not from your foreign income. And um, in, our, in our company, Liberation Travel, we decided that Paraguay is probably the best and cheapest residency for digital nomads um, because you can enjoy benefits of territorial taxation. Uh, you, can, you can have these national ID cedula and your uh, national ID cedula. You can visit all countries, core countries of Mercosur, including Brazil, uh, Uruguay and Argentina and what is also cool that we can immediately register you at a tax office so anyone can publicly verify on the website of the tax office of Paraguay that you are like a proper tax resident of Paraguay and you also quite easily obtain the driving license of Paraguay. You can use the driving license of Paraguay for example in the Czech Republic or in the most countries of the EU. Uh, one important information, if you're a Czech or Slovak uh, citizen, as I told you before, you need to have tax residency in some country. Otherwise, your citizenship country, like the Czech Republic or Slovakia, will usurp you. So even if you don't live in Czech Republic and Slovakia and you're a Czech citizen or Slovak, Slovak citizen, uh, you will be tax resident of Czech Republic or Slovakia if you are not able to prove that you have tax residency in some other country. Um, Paraguay also didn't sign CRS, which is like a common reporting standard. So, they, uh, so Paraguayan banks don't do automatic reporting like the, the most banks. It's the tax paradise in South America. So uh, with a right-wing government, you have to pay only 10% income tax from the local income, uh, from the local in program source of income and 0% tax for foreign income. VAT is 10%, but during pandemic, uh, during pandemic it was decreased to 5% because 10% of VAT is just too much. 
As I told you, he's a core member of Mercosur. It's a very stable environment. And there is like a strong crypto community. Uh, in liberation travel, we move more than 300 people from Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, um, Hungary to, to Paraguay. And you need to visit this uh, country to obtain the residency just for three days. So it's a really fast process. I should definitely mention other good residencies with a zero or territorial taxation. Panama. Panama is also one of my favorite countries. In Panama, uh, if you want to have permanent residency, you need to buy the property for at least $200,000. Uh, $200, or you have to be employed in the Panamanian company for first two years. Uruguay, another really beautiful and probably also the most expensive and the most developed country in South America. Uh, to obtain the permanent residency, you have to live the first two year majority of your time. So it means more than six months every year. And another very favorite op option is Dubai. Uh, one of the problems of Dubai is that you have to visit Dubai every six months. And to keep your residence in Dubai, you need to do some kind of business there. So you have to be official, an official employee of some Dubai company, or you have to create this company and keep this company. Um, now the question is, when you change your tax residency to all these countries I mentioned, how you can do legal business in the most countries, including the EU? The best option, if you are a non-US citizen, if you are a non-US tax uh, resident, is just use uh, US LLC disregarded company, which is like a one-man LLC company. And the explanation is quite easy, because United States signed double tax treaty agreements with almost all countries in the world. So basically, when you issue the invoice from your uh, US company to any, any company or any physical person um, in the European Union, for example, every European company can use this invoice as an expense, which is super cool. Uh, at the same time, you can easily open the bank account in the US for this, uh, for this ULC company. For example, these services, mercury.com or vice.com. And what is also cool for this US company, you can also use to receive money, personal bank account, for example, in Georgia. And it's completely legal according to the tax code in the US. So basically, how it works, uh, why it's so why it's so cool? Because if you have US LLC uh, company, there is something what is called path through mechanism, which means the tax duties of this US LLC company is transformed to the tax residency of the owner of this company. So if you're like a Paraguayan tax resident or you are a Panamanian tax resident and you own the US company and you use this company to issue invoices to your European customers, in this setup, if you have only tax residency in Prague and in Panama, you don't need to pay taxes at all, which is really interesting because these two countries are territorial taxation countries, so your income from the US company, you even don't need to declare this income in Prague or in Panama, which is really nice. Uh, if you can afford it, don't use bank accounts uh, because the best is just stay in, stay in Bitcoin, I'm also like a big fan of Monero because, because banks, using banks is really dangerous from the, from the privacy perspective because banks always report a lot of sensitive information about you. And if you use crypto, there is no bank reporting. There is no one who can stop or freeze your, uh, freeze your transaction or freeze your bank account. Nobody, nobody will ask you a stupid question what is the source of your income, for example. And so, so if you can afford it to have a US LLC company of, or any offshore company with a crypto only or Bitcoin only, uh, it's the best because in this situation, you can choose, you, you, you will have significantly more opportunities or more possibilities where to create the company. Because for example, if you have company in Panama, it's very, very difficult to open the bank account for Panamanian company. Even in Panama, it is 
difficult to open a, a bank account for Panamanian company. And you should know that Bitcoin is definitely the best liberation tool. So with the banks, it's like with the regulation. The, bank, the best bank is no bank, uh, if you can afford it, of course. Uh, I strongly recommend it if you have to use bank accounts, open the bank account in non-CRS country. Non-CRS country means this country will not report you when you have the bank account. For example, Georgia or Paraguay did not, cite, uh, did not sign the CRS. So if you open the bank account in Georgia, we can help you with that. Or in Paraguay, these two banks or these banks in these countries won't report you. Also, very uh, good option, xapa.com, which is like a Bitcoin crypto card or Bitcoin crypto card, where it's possible to set up your Panamanian or Paraguayan or Uruguayan tax residency, which is really practical. So basically, they report or do any notification only to the tax office in Paraguay. And for the Paraguayan tax office, they consider it as a foreign income, so they don't care. Phones and SIM cards. So uh, if you really care about privacy, um, I recommend you to buy a Google Pixel uh, phone and flash it with the most secure and privacy ever Android distribution, which is called Graphene OS. Uh, if, you, if you want super private phone and changing email, one important information, changing email in the European Union is prohibited. You cannot do that legally, but in many countries it's legal. So you can buy banana phone, which is Nokia 8110 for G, where it's possible to change email, which is illegal, for example, in the European Union. Um, if, if you, you can also buy anonymous SIM cards. For example, my, my option I use, uh, I use in the European Union is KeepGo. You can buy it anonymously and pay, pay by Bitcoin, or you can buy with Monero or Bitcoin another eSIM using Silent Link. Uh, there are still a lot of KYC SIM cards when you have to provide some identity, but they, uh, they have like a really nice wide coverage in most countries in the world. For example, now in Czech Republic, I use Prego and Claro. I have the, the best, I have better programs than most uh, Czech mobile operators are able to, to provide me. Uh, if you really travel a lot, I recommend you a solution which is called MyPokeFi. Because using MyPocketFi, you have like a global coverage in works almost in all countries in the world, and you pay fixed three dollars per uh, one gigabyte. So, uh, how the global opportunities may look like? I'm going to describe you my my, my personal situation. I am the Slovak citizen, so my citizenship. But one important information. I'm not resident of the Europe, you know. I have no residency, no connection to the, to the like, legal connection to the European Union. So I'm here like a Paraguayan tourist or Panamanian tourist, which basically means as an EU citizen, I can stay, I can stay in um, Europe Union or in Czech Republic and Slovakia as much as I want with no residency which means I have no duties here. I don't pay any healthcare insurance or social insurance like you. So I can enjoy life in European Union without any, any duties. I have permanent and tax residency in Prague and Panama. I invoice all my customers using company in Wyoming, United States. Uh, I, Liberation Travel is crypto only company. We don't have any bank account. We don't want bank account. I think bank accounts are obsolete. So you should do everything and persuade your customers not to use fiat. Fiat is obsolete. Let's switch to crypto. Let's, let's switch to Bitcoin. But as I told you, if you, have, if, if you, if you, if you need some bank account, uh, prefer non-CRS country, for example, Georgia or Paraguay. If crypto card, you can use xapo.com. Uh, I use like a global healthcare insurance company. It's called William Russell, but there are plenty of uh, global healthcare insurance providers. I use uh, in the whole American Europe, I use Prague and Clara. In Europe, I use Anonymous, KeepGo, or Pokefy, 
which covers uh, the whole world. So if you can afford it, and I strongly believe most of you can afford it, then don't suffer by your tax and corruption. Uh, don't suffer by your toxic corruption and victimless crimes. Become free and become the global opportunist. That's a lot. Thank you a lot. And we have like an extra three minutes for maybe one or two questions. Just raise your hand and, uh, and ask if you have any questions. Yep. Hi. So my question is there was a map where you said the light blue countries are favorable. And there were some countries with pink. What do they stand for, like the color pink? Pink means that all these, uh, all your map you can see, like for example, Eritrea or United States are pink countries, which means that your tax duty is associated with, with your citizenship. So it doesn't matter where you live uh, or where you move, you are still tax resident of United States. So basically, if you have income more than $100,000 uh, per year, you have to declare your income to the U IRS, the U.S. tax office, and you have paid taxes. So, so basically, all U.S. citizens are from this part of it, tax slaves. Did I see it right that Hungary was colored with Hungary pink? is also a special country. Uh, I can, like, uh, it's not like in the U.S. It's a bit different. After this presentation, I can explain you how it works in Hungary. Thank you. Another question? How do you handle the situation with physical address? Because most of the uh, companies like banks, they will require some physical address to, uh, to, to have when you, when you open bank accounts. Yeah. Uh, when it, for example, in Paraguay or Panama, it's quite easy to obtain the proof of address. So for example, uh, in Paraguay, directly the, uh, it's called like a, like a traffic police. We, if you're like a if you're like resident, they will provide you like some proof of address. So and then you can use you, you can use this proof of address to open the bank account to do the KYC and everything. This is quite interesting. In South America, most countries they don't care about like a physical address. For either you are the the resident of Paraguay or Panama or not. So you don't have like a printed your physical address on your national ID. Uh, and so, so, so basically, it's quite easy to obtain these address officially from the government. And then you can use this KYC, uh, this, this proof of address document to do any KYC process to open the bank account. And so, for example, in Georgia, all Georgian banks, they don't care about your address. They don't care about your proof of address. They, the, you need only passport to open the bank account. And you can, you can tell them any address and they don't check it at all. So in Georgia, it's possible to open the bank account only using passport, no address. If, when you go shopping, do you use cash or some kind of card? Very good, very good question. When I do shopping, I prefer using cash. For example, here, I, okay, here I'm using Lightning, Bitcoin Lightning. So I prefer Bitcoin Lightning or crypto. If it's not possible, I pay cash. If it's not possible, use accepting cash. For example, in some Scandinavian countries, they, it's not possible to pay by cash at all. I use like some crypto cards. So I top up with a Bitcoin Lightning, my crypto card, and I use my Bitcoin card. But I prefer using cash or Lightning all the time. So if I'm from Slovakia and I want to go uh, for this schema, and I still want to have a customer in Slovakia, the only way is to have the company in the United States, or could I have it, let's say, in some other European country? If you're a Slovak citizen and you want to do business using your Slovak company, it's still possible. So you can use Slovak company to issue invoices to your Slovak customers, but you cannot, if, if you don't want to pay taxes in Slovakia as a physical person, you cannot be an employee of your Slovak company, and also you cannot pay uh, any, any money from this Slovak company to you as a physical person. So basically you cannot pay dividends from, from a Slovak company because then you can potentially pay withdrawal taxes, and that's what you, what you don't want. So still it's possible to use your Slovak companies, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't pay like a profit from this company to you as a physical person, because if, if they register you as a tax resident of Panama or Paraguay, you have to pay special withdrawal taxes. So, so then I could use, for example, also Czech company or, or any, any Czech com other, it you, is not only you. Yeah, you can also use Czech company, but you cannot pay out like a profit from this company. But if you use US company, 
uh, for Czech customer or US customer, all European customers shouldn't have problems with the, the US company because for them, it's the same like the invoice from Facebook, Google, you know, any, any corporation.